and how do you do it? So then, Graham and I said, like, why don't we walk you through that, right? So, Graham, go ahead. Great, thanks. So, um, <clears throat> quite loud, but uh, my name is Graham Pepperson, and I am an engineer uh, on the Pinpoint team. Um, so, yeah, we talked about the, the different perspectives or personas with the, uh, with the offering. Um, I'd like to walk through, really just kind of focus on how would a developer get started inside of Pinpoint. We wanted to make barrier to entry really low, really easy. So um, if you're not familiar with Mobile Hub, uh, we leverage that as a service. It helps you get quick start um, a bootstrap with things like Cloud API, chatbot samples, and also a Pinpoint demo. Um, so from the marketing uh, pages is where I'm at right now, um, by clicking on the Getting Started link, this will take you into the actual pinpoint landing page console where you'll see a list of all of your apps. So as a developer, I'm going to go into the mobile hub console. I'm going to give this a name, pinpoint launch demo. Why does this always happen? So um, what we're doing right now is um, we're enabling, uh, you can enable lots of different uh, of, the, of the offerings uh, from Mobile Hub uh, and get a sample app that showcases lots of different things. But we're gonna focus on just Pinpoint for now, which uh, we also dub engagement. Um, we offer support for both Android and iOS. Um, and I'm going to set this up for Android credentials. And what we're doing here is we're generating an actual um, you know, sample application that builds uh, an example with you and, and gives you our pinpoint SDK. Um, so one of the things that we did with the, the SDKs was we broke out standalone SDKs. And these SDKs are all about um, helping you um, seamlessly get started with registering all of the apps uh, collecting data, uh, known data about the device, enabling you to add some custom data of your, your own, but also deal with the push notifications that are coming in and be able to record custom events for deeper in, uh, engagement and in, in analytics tracking. The integration steps here that you'll, you can walk through um, if you like to. By downloading the sample app, all you really need to do to get started with this inside of Android, for example, um, is click the button and unzip it. So I've done that, I'll skip ahead over to having this loaded up inside of Android Studio, where I've got an emulator, um, had an emulator run. So I'll pop that up and run it again. So Mobile Hub uh, has created this, uh, this project on the left-hand side that's done all the heavy lifting for you. It's, it's, uh, you know, we, we created the project, we supplied the credentials, so it's generated the, the app that we need to do. The developer doesn't need to really touch anything. Um, and I'll demonstrate that now by simply just clicking the debug. I haven't, I haven't touched any code in the sample app whatsoever. So the sample app, um, if you do enable lots of other different cards, like, like the chatbot sample, for example, you'll see those listed in some period. We're focused on the user engagement uh, for the Amazon Pinpoint uh, um, demo, and demoing uh, the actual user engagement. Clicking into this card, what I see is um, the top section, which is the information that we look at this emulated device itself. So we pull off the easy stuff, right, like the platform, the make, the model, the version, things that we can just know automatically. And we also show a sample down here about the custom attributes that uh, Georgie was talking about. So some ideas of custom attributes might be that you create a new subscription, like a feed app, right? Um, and you want to, or different users are interested in, I don't know, sports and technology, things like that. That would be a good example of uh, uh, custom attributes, which are then used later on to be able to target demographics and build segments. Um, so I'll just again, turn on winter and summer. Coming back into um, well, I, before I go uh, all the way back, I did want to also mention that um, the, in addition to the SDK, the mobile SDKs that come down, we also have a full-fledged API SDK. 
So being able to do things like manage these segments and manage campaigns, be able to migrate your existing uh, users and, 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 uh, and endpoints into the system is all available through all the you know, modern programming languages, Java, Go, Python, .NET, CL, or AWS, CLI, PowerShell, so on and so forth. So on the left-hand side of the, uh, of the mobile hub um, website is the engage icon. This will link us back into the pinpoint console. It'll drop me directly into uh, this new app that I just created. And while I can go through and kind of show you, you know, analytics about like kind of nothing that's really in here, I'm actually going to flip it over right now back to Georgia to discuss the, uh, the marketing persona and flow. Well. Graham, uh, one yeah. question before we go. Um, if you're on the Google Hub page and you had an existing app, how would you work on that? Like, so it's not just a sample app, you do get the integration steps for your existing app too, right? Yes, absolutely. Got it. Yeah. So now let's talk about uh, what Pinpoint can do. So we talked about data, right? Uh, having this data available. With Pinpoint, you can bring in uh, your existing data from your app users. So as a marketer, if I was going through this, I would like, who are my users? What are my users doing? So I could say, all right, I have 67,000 users I can target. I have 529 of them who are monthly active. So the reason why that discrepancy is there is because we've been loading data up and this is a test app. So this is all the actual people who are using this and the rest are actual devices going on keep using it. So you can quickly understand the discrepancy in an app to understand where to target. You can also see how many of them are new users and you can also see how many sessions you have on a daily basis. You can also go through your uh, details on your demographics. So the way the custom attributes are broken up, the way you are, uh, so a couple of things, right? Graham mentioned you have a lot of the out of the box demographic attributes, which are your device attributes. So quickly know your platform split, quickly know your app version, models, etc. And you can also know your custom attributes. So here for, in this app, we have set up uh, three custom attributes, your interest, your uh, personas, and your subscription. So are you a free or paid customer? Are you, uh, what's your interest? And what, what persona are you? Are you? Uh, now that I know this, let's, and I know that I have this tiny segment of humans who I really want to target because they're the real people. So why don't I just go create a campaign? Before, I, so a couple of things, right? One thing is I can define a segment in a campaign itself. I can name a campaign. So let's see. And here you have an option to either define an A-B test or a standard campaign. So if you were going by an A-B test, you have a message or a schedule. Do you want to create an A-B test by a message or do you want to create an A-B test by a schedule? For you, you can say, let's create a, today is the launch day, so let's create a standard campaign. Let's say, uh, let's reach out to all users who have used the app in the last 30 days who are humans who are interested in analytics because we launched this as an analytics solution, who are, in, who are interested, who are humans. And we see that we have six month, six active users. So this also allows you, based on your uh, segment definition, you can quickly see how many users are in this segment. So we are doing the computation at runtime and giving you current snapshot of this. So now after, after a week, but the good thing is even after a week, if now the segment increases to 100, you don't have to recompute. We'll calculate that on your behalf based on the logic that you've defined here. Once you do that, uh, if you go here, you can define your holdout. How much do you want to, let's say, 10 percent holdout. And then you go to the next step. You get to the notification bar where you can actually define craft your message. So now, you would, in addition to this, in, in, in addition to the title and the message, you can also specify your message action. Do you want the message to open an app? Do you want a message to open the URL, or do you want to deep link into a into a certain point in your app? And in, the reason why the deep linking is important, think about the use case, right? You could uh, have a deal running. You could have a in, interesting article running on your app, a news article. You could have it be a deal or a news alert running. And you want to send them directly to that, or you're a new game uh, game developer having launched a new feature. 
you want to push the customers to that particular feature, and that's where deep linking will allow you to seamlessly push them to that, here, that, that particular feature. You also have advanced settings here, where you can give your iOS uh, media URLs and this media URLs so that these media URLs will be transported uh, through the app in the notification. The other piece that we talked about was a silent notification, where you can actually define a silent notification and just pass a JSON body as part of the message. And this will be handled uh, if you instrument it based on how you instrumented your app, this will be handled on the app at that point. Let's run through this use case. Of this. Uh, so let's call this the action as open app. Now you can quickly go and say, what time do you want to schedule this? Do you want, uh, do you want to schedule this as a once? Okay, so let's schedule it for today. Uh, later today, let's schedule it at, and then let's say you want to do it at, sorry. And you can say which, uh, which, uh, which time zone I want to send it out. And the reason, uh, the time zone is important, right? If you have users who are across different parts of the world, Based on the time zone they are selecting, based on Pacific Standard Time, the dartboard will start setting campaigns in Pacific Standard Time and will go through the world wherever you use it and hit them at that particular local time for the user. And if I want to hit all my users at one time, all I do is I just simply deselect this and I'm done. Uh, all right, so this is now in a place we can set it up. Okay, oh, take, take, okay. So let's just do it today and done. Next step, you do a review and launch. So once you've launched your campaign, you wait for a minute. This campaign will now be scheduled at six o'clock. So this is the how we fired it. So this campaign now will be fired at six o'clock today. And if you want to see the campaign details here, you can come here. Here you will be see, uh, because there's no campaign that is run on this app, you'd see that there are no campaign metrics on this. Right now, there are no active campaigns. But we have historically run campaigns before this, so we see some of the historical campaign data that has been running here. Cool. Uh, that's the extent of the demo for today. Uh, I think the next part of the slide here. <laughs>